by thanking the American people for engaging so seriously with this process. Um, and I want to thank the members of the Senate, and I want to thank the members of the House, and I want to thank uh, the terrific members of the uh, House impeachment manager team. Um, Trump stormed our house with the mob he incited, and we defended our house. And he violated our Constitution, and we defended the Constitution, and they tried to trash our democracy, and we revived it, and we protected it. Um, this was the most bipartisan presidential impeachment in the history of the United States, and we know that impeachment for reasons that we could explore at some other time often becomes partisan, but this was the most bipartisan presidential impeachment event in the history of the country. It was also the largest Senate vote for a presidential impeachment, 57 to 43. And of course, the vote to impeach was 232 to 197 uh, in the House. So we have uh, a clear and convincing majority of members of Congress that the president actually incited violent insurrection against the union and against the Congress. Um, Senator Mitch McConnell just went to the floor essentially to say that we made our case on the facts, that he believed that uh, Donald Trump was practically and morally responsible for inciting the events of uh, January 6th. He described it as we did, as a disgraceful dereliction of duty, a desertion of his office. And um, he made a series of uh, statements that we didn't even make, saying that this was not over yet by a long shot, essentially, and that um, there was the path of criminal prosecution um, for uh, the former president, the disgraced and now twice impeached um, former president. So uh, the bottom line is that um, we convinced a, a big majority uh, in the Senate of our case. I'm very proud of the exceptional hard work of these managers who worked through the night, uh, many nights over several weeks, um, to make this case to the Senate and uh, to the union. Um, as to, um, I just want to say, you know, one word about the whole thing about witnesses. We were able to get um, treated uh, as, uh, as live under oath testimony, the statement of our colleague, Congresswoman Jamie Herrera Butler. Uh, we were able to get a stipulation to that and get it into uh, evidence today by asking for her uh, as a witness. Um, if you listen to Mitch McConnell and the Republicans uh, who are now hurriedly explaining why they voted not to convict, all of them are hinging it on a legal argument, jurisdictional or some other legal argument, that um, could never be overcome by any number of witnesses. We could have had 5,000 witnesses and Mitch McConnell would be making the same speech because what he's asserting is that the Senate never has jurisdiction over a former president. And for reasons I don't need to belabor because a big part of the trial was about this, we reject that completely. It's totally at odds with our history, the Blunt case, the Belknap case, um, the text of the Constitution, the original intent of the Constitution, the original understanding of the Constitution, the Senate's own precedents, and so on. But in any event, the point is that no number of witnesses demonstrating that Donald Trump continued to incite the insurrectionists, even after the invasion of the Capitol, would convince them. They, they wouldn't be convinced. They were hinging it on a matter of law, which we thought we had settled back on Tuesday, of course, when the Senate elected to exercise jurisdiction and to reject that jurisdictional constitutional argument. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, Mitch McConnell clearly feels that uh, Donald Trump remains a huge problem for the Republican Party, even if he has been disgraced in the eyes of the country. And uh, that is not my jurisdiction, and I really don't have anything to say about that. I think you know, they will uh, have to deal with the political dynamics uh, within, their, within their own party. So um, we, did get, um, we did get Donald Trump at least to admit that he's a former president now, so that's good news. Uh, he's not asserting that somehow he's still president, um, and they're uh, recognizing, at least in a de facto sense, 
um, the legitimacy of this presidential election, which, of course, President Biden won by more than 7 million votes and by a margin um, of 306 to 232, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. With that, I will close my remarks, and the questions are open for uh, any of us, and I'm going to uh, share the podium with my distinguished colleagues. Okay. Yes, my name. Yes. Of this uh, procedural, procedural motion, five Republicans broke ranks. They voted on the, the Rand Paul motion, and there were six on the constitutionality. Then there were seven who broke ranks on the motion. So, what's to say if you didn't push harder on witnesses, try to get someone to provide more, say, more, shed more light into Donald Trump's thinking that you couldn't have grown the number of Republican defectors? All right. Um, somebody else want to take a shot at that? I thought I addressed that, but anybody else want to? Yes, please, please. Listen, we heard from, this, from the minority leader, Mitch McConnell, that we have proven the case. He said specifically, the House managers have proven the facts of the case. And before we started um, yesterday, we knew when we rested, we rested with overwhelming evidence as to the facts of this case. These all jurors were also witnesses to the crime. They knew specifically what was happening. Um, and then there was, you know, we found additional information about Herrera Butler, which we, on yesterday evening, we decided that we were going to go after. And we got it. We got that information to further amplify what we had already proven there in court. There is no other additional witnesses that we were friendly to us that were not there on the screen the body cameras of the Capitol Police officers, how much more resonance would that have given to them than the actual seeing the day of the insurrection? Individuals that uh, others of us would have liked to have called, like the president who we invited, is in fact the defendant and does not have to testify. Other individuals who may have been there with the president were not friendly witnesses to us and would have required subpoenas and months of litigation. They are still litigating McGahn in impeachment one a year later. And so we believe that we have shown that this president is a disgrace to our country. Mitch McConnell himself said that. These senators have decided to hang their hat on jurisdictional grounds, which are not based in the evidence, which are not based on the facts, and they will have to be judged for that. We have done our duty to the American people. I'm a, let me introduce uh, Speaker Pelosi, and I'll come to you next. Thank you. It had not been my intention to come to this uh, press availability, uh, uh, however tempting it would be to sing the praises of our House managers on behalf not only of the House of Representatives, on behalf of the American people, and I have to say personally on behalf of my grandchildren who drew great hope and inspiration from each and every one of you. We could not be prouder of, of your patriotic presentations, the clarity in which you presented, and again, uh, the inspiration that you have been to so many people. So I thank you for that. When I see all of them, it reminds me that when we recruit candidates to run for office or we see them self-recruiting, we always say, and they'll say, well, I could be the president of my university, or I could be the head of my hospital department, or this or that. And I, so I have to think about whether I run for Congress. We always say, we don't want anybody without options. That's why we're looking to you to run, because you have options. That shouldn't be a reason for you not to run. But what we saw in that Senate today was a cowardly group of Republicans who apparently have no options because they were afraid to defend their job, respect the institution in which they serve. Imagine that it would be vandalized in so many bad ways that I won't even go into here, and that they would not respect their institute. That the president of the Senate, Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, was the chant and they just dismissed that. Why? Because maybe they can't get another job. 
What is so important about any one of us? What is so important about the political survival of any one of us that is more important than our constitution that we take an oath to protect and defend? But why I came over was because I listened to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell, who when this distinguished group of House managers were gathered on January 15th, to deliver the articles of impeachment, could not, we're told, it could not be received because Mitch McConnell had shut down the Senate and was going to keep it shut down until right, until the inauguration. So for him to get up there and make this indictment against the president and then say, but I can't, I can't uh, vote for it because it's after the fact, the fact that he established the fact that he established that it could not be delivered before the inauguration. Now, when you think about January 6th, between January 6th and January 20th, you're only talking about just under two weeks, a day under two weeks. So, the big lie, uh, stop the steal, the big lie that you talked about, stop the steal, was the momentum for getting these people there on the 6th, they honestly believe, for whatever reason, maybe too much social media, whatever, watch social media, that movie. So why they were thinking that that was true, that the election was not legitimate, whatever the reason the president told them. So, okay, so that's the 6th. The week later, we impeach in the House. Thank you to those of you who participated right away. Jamie Raskin. Uh, 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 Ted Lieu and De David Cicilline were David, David Cicilline. They were, they had it all written up and ready to go, bipartisanly pass the House, and then two days later, ready with the case to take to the Senate. Oh, we can't receive it. Not a question. And then by the law, we're supposed to receive it, and the next day start the trial. So for Mitch McConnell who created the situation where it could not have been heard before the 20th, or even begun before the 20th in the Senate, to say all the things he said, oh my gosh, about Donald Trump and how horrible he was and is, and then say, but the time, the time that the Democrat, the House chose to bring it over. No, we didn't choose. You chose not to receive it. So I think that's really important. And again, it doesn't matter, as Jamie and others have told him. You can have the case after the person is out of office. So it's an elementary discussion. The, con the Senate ruled in that way and, and honor your precedent on this. So it wasn't, it didn't matter except it was not the reason that he voted the way he did. It was the excuse that he used. And so that's why I think it's important, because that was a very important speech. I thought Chuck Schumer's speech was remarkable in laying it all out. I think he was inspired by all of you because you raised the level of all of this to such a place of patriotism and knowledge of our country, our history, and, uh, and what we owe our children. Again, we always said, honoring the vision of our founders, worthy of the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, and respecting the aspirations of our children. They did all of that. And as Jane, uh, the distinguished lead uh, manager said earlier on this presidential weekend, our sense of of patriotism is stirred, and, and uh, we're called upon in a stronger way. So I want to thank them. I want to thank Stacy Poskett. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Madeline Dean. Thank you very much, Joe Nagus. Thank you, Eric Swalwell. Thank you, Dino DeGette. Thank you, David Cicilline. Thank you, Ted Liu. Thank you, Joaquin Castro. Thank you very much, Mr. Lead uh, Manager on all of this. We just couldn't be prouder. I've been hearing from my grandchildren who are very sad that justice wasn't done.
But by 15 votes, the Senate voted uh, uh, to convict a good bipartisan statement about what has happened. It would not have been accomplished without your brilliant uh, presentation. So I thank you for that, and I yield the floor back to all of you as I leave. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, thank you for your confidence in us. I was going to go next to Scott. Were you going to take the next one, David? Is that good? Okay. Let's go. For the Speaker, she had a comment about Mr. Sano's statement on the floor suggesting that President Trump still was liable criminally or civilly for everything he did in office. Do you think now that the Justice Department or State Attorney General should uh, pursue the legal He even hedged on that. Remember when he talked about when he talked about incitement, he said he didn't think this rose to level. Oh, and so, so, it, uh, uh, so he he was hedging all over the place. I don't know whether it was for donors or or what, but whatever it was, it was a very disingenuous speech. And I say that regretfully because I always want to be able to work work with uh, the leadership of the other party. I think our country needs a strong Republican Party. It's very important. And for him to have tried to have it every which way. But we will be going forward to make sure that this never happens again in terms of what were the, to investigate and evaluate what caused this, and uh, both in terms of its, the motivation, but also in terms of the security that we have to have as we go forward, recognizing how inflaming even some of our elected officials uh, can be. But I, I defer to all these distinguished lawyers about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. So, but, but Speaker Pelosi, 